Um, Elias, I'd like to turn to the use of bosutinib, of what type of patient you choose to use bosutinib. You know, I think we, we live in a luxurious time where we have all these TKIs available and we have to pick and choose. And I would love one day to have treatment a la carte where patient A will get dazatinib, patient B, nilotinib, C, bosutinib, and then the ponatinib. So bosutinib, the efficacy wise, based on the phase two trial reported, they are equivalent to other TKIs. So nilotinib and dazatinib, bosutinib, more or less, they have the same efficacy. Bosutinib has been tested in a post imatinib failure and in patients who failed two TKIs. It is only third generation, only second generation of TKIs inhibitors assessed after two failure uh, of imatinib, nilotinib, or dazatinib. The differentiating effect of this drug is the safety profile. In fact, it causes less amount of suppression than the other TKIs. It doesn't have a signal with the vascular uh, problems. In fact, it's the only drug where on the label, there's nothing about QT, QT prolongation, black box warning or dazatinib QT prolongation. I think for somebody with risk factors, vascular events, lung injuries, I'll be very comfortable with the uh, bosutinib. The dose is 500 milligrams per day. Uh, you can go with the label. Uh, the most common side effects observed are diarrhea happening early on. Uh, that can be managed by most of the time adding medication for the diarrhea emergent, for example or you can hold therapy for a few days and resume at the same dose most of the time. If it's recurring and prolonged, you can reduce to 400 milligrams per day. Second most common side effect is essential liver dysfunction. Uh, same approach, holding the dose or reduce, uh, interrupting the treatment will help most of the time. Sometimes you have to reduce the dose. Bottom line, what we're doing in my practice, I will use at 400 milligrams per day, have the first month and escalate to 500. I haven't seen a problem. I can't compare, like I don't have the numbers or the statistics to tell you it's better, but I feel, I mean, based on experience with the patient, it seems to be better to the approach. Uh, that's what I can say about the drug. In a third line, uh, the drug is less effective than a second line. Patients are heavily treated, but still we do see response in about 20 to 30% uh, of the patient. Mutation profile is similar to dazatinib in a way like V299L and F317L are not very sensitive to buzotinib, same as 315I as well. Certainly, it's my impression that of the five approved TKIs, that this is the one that we probably have the least clinical experience with in terms of published data and long-term follow-up uh, being presented anywhere. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm just a little bit unclear myself as to whether or not we can say that this, I mean, I, I think we can say that so far there doesn't appear to be any serious late toxicity, but I think we do need to keep in mind that with with dasatinib and nilotinib, these were really only appreciated later, and I'm not sure that we have the body of evidence and the follow-up from basutinib to really conclude that it, it it's, it's any different well, that's, quite yet. That's a great question because in Houston, we're part of other centers as well where we're doing non-interventional study just to capture the side effect on buzotinib in real life and to see what is the incidence and what will happen at the long term. Just a follow-up study to capture the side effect and that will help us as well, knowing better about it.